Welcome everybody and those of us who are joining us live stream. And we just need a couple more minutes. We're waiting on some additional worship aids. So, and in the meantime, Justine, our wonderful pianist, is going to continue to play for us. Thank you. Okay, well, our printer is giving us some trouble, so we will not have additional worship aids, and I apologize for that. So welcome, everybody, and welcome to you uh, live streaming with us, and so we can, we can begin. Thank you. Thank you. But before we uh, begin our opening hymn, uh, can I just please review some of the policies of the Solanus Casey Center, because we know there's many people uh, who are here for the first time, and welcome to you all. In particular, uh, because uh, I hope I'm saying it right, Laura. Laura Scalzo uh, is here from the St. Paschal Fraternity in Toledo, and uh, because of COVID and all that, she is uh, professing her vows here. And so we welcome those from Toledo that might be here with uh, Laura or watching uh, live stream. We also want to welcome Jeannie, who's uh, the, the minister of that fraternity. Uh, here at the Solana Center, we do practice safety measures, so we ask everyone to please continue to wear your masks at all time and to dis socially distant from people who are not uh, from your own household. Uh, if you're from the same household, it's okay to be closer to each other. Uh, those who have a role in the liturgy, please come forward with your mask on. And when you get uh, up to this microphone in front of me or in the sanctuary, you, you can remove your mask and perform the, the liturgical service that we're asking of you today. For communion this morning or this afternoon, we'll all come up uh, the center aisle. We ask you to continue to wear your masks until you get close to myself, we'll be distributing communion, and then you can take your mask off to receive uh, communion from me. And please reapply the mask as soon as you've consumed uh, the Blessed Sacrament. Okay, let's begin with our opening hymn. Shine in your church, gather to 
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with each of you. Thank you. And what a joy it is for all of us to experience, once again, a profession of a way of life uh, within our church. So many of us struggle to find the way to live the gospel that's right for us. And today we celebrate uh, that discovery in four people who wish to, to profess in the lay Franciscan way of life. Let's take a moment to reflect for ourselves how we live the gospel and respond to the word of God. Lord Jesus, you are the word, the first of all creation. Lord, have mercy. You are the written word that guides us on our way. Christ, have mercy. You are the word made flesh who saves us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sin, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. Glory to God. God in the highest and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, 
Let us pray. O God, who willed that the grace of baptism should flourish in the lives of your servants, Josh, Joshua, Joe, Steve, and Laura, so that they might strive to follow more closely in the footsteps of your Son, grant, we pray, that constantly seeking evangelical perfection they may add to the holiness of your church and increase her apostolic zeal. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of, I'm sorry, that's not it. Should be proud. reading from the book of Proverbs. When one finds a worthy wife, her value is far beyond pearls. Her husband, entrusting his heart to her, has an unfailing prize. She brings him good and not evil all the days of her life. She obtains wool and flax and works with loving hands. She puts her hands to the distaff and her fingers ply the symbol. She reaches out her hands to the poor and extends her arms to the needy. Charm is deceptive and beauty fleeting. The woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Give her a reward for her labors and let her works praise her at the city gates. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
a reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Concerning times and seasons, brothers and sisters, you have no need for anything to be written to you, for you yourselves know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief at night. When people are saying peace and security, then sudden disaster comes upon them like labor pains upon a pregnant woman and they will not escape. But you, brothers and sisters, are not in darkness for that day to overtake you like a thief. For all of you are children of the light and children of the day. You are not of the night or of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as the rest do, but let us stay alert and sober. The word of the Lord. Thanks. from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus told his disciples this parable. A man going on a journey called in his servants and entrusted his possessions to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to a third one each one according to his ability. Then he went away. Immediately, the one who received five talents went and traded with them and made another five. Likewise, the one who received two made another two. But the man who received one went off and dug a hole in the ground and buried his master's money. After a long time, the master of those servants came back and settled accounts with them. The one who had received five talents came forward, bringing the additional five. He said, Master, you gave me five talents. See, I have made five more. His master said to him, Well done, my good and faithful servant. Since you were faithful in small matters, I will give you great responsibilities. Come, share your master's joy. Then the one who had received two talents also came forward and said, Master, you gave me two talents. See, I have made two more. His master said to him, 
Well done, my good and faithful servant. Since you were faithful in small things, I will give you greater responsibilities. Come, share your master's joy. Then the one who had received the one talent came forward and said, Master, I knew you were a demanding person, harvesting where you did not plant and gathering where you did not scatter. So out of fear, I went off and buried your talent in the ground. Here it is back. The master said to him in reply, You wicked, lazy servant. So you knew that I harvest where I did not plant and gather where I did not scatter. Should you not then have put my money in the bank so that I would have got to it back with interest on my return? Now then, take the talent from him and give it to the one with ten. For to everyone who has, more will be given, and he or she will grow rich. But from the one who has not, even what he or she has will be taken away. And throw this useless servant into the darkness outside where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. The Gospel of the Lord. At this time, can I have Joshua, Joe, and Steve stand, and Laura? Okay. Joshua, Joe, and Steve, what do you request? Laura, what do you request? The fraternity accepts your petition and is united with you in your prayer. May the Holy Spirit confirm in you the work he has begun. Capuchins customarily applaud. My homily is short so that the four to profess uh, can return to the rite of profession and share with us a little bit of what this day means to them. But isn't uh, the event we're celebrating today and the gospel we, we read just an incredible confluence of ideas? Uh, yesterday we had a little morning of reflection among the three who were to profess from the St. Bonaventure fraternity and I was struck how each one of you, in some way or another, experienced something that was very challenging, something that in many ways might have wanted to lead you to just simply give up and not go on, or not give in the way that you had grown accustomed to giving before. But each of you came to that moment, perhaps in a discovery, where you said, I want to give more. And you set out on a journey to discover how you could best do that. I want to give more. I want to give back five talents. I want to give back two uh, talents. I don't want to just stay home, dig a hole in the backyard, and, and hide the gift God gave me. I want to give back. This profession 
is an example of us living the gospel, we are an evangelical people, aren't we? We live the gospel, and through this profession, we live out the gospel in the Franciscan way of life. I'd now like to invite individually each of those to profess to come forward and maybe talk a little bit about what this day means. I'm sorry, I'm going to just move this forward a little so you don't knock over um, our candle. Please come forward, and when you get here, to take off your mask. Otherwise, it's hard for people live streaming to hear. Steve, would you mind beginning? I'm actually going to break that rule and follow the earlier rule, Father Bill, if you don't mind. Um, as you'll hear from Joe and Joshua in a second, uh, I'm definitely the warm-up act in terms of the compelling nature of my particular story. Uh, yesterday, I complained about going last in alphabetical order, um, but then we realized what a tough act that was to follow. It reminds me, at our church at St. Suzanne, Our Lady Gate of Heaven, we make announcements after the communion reflection song, and standing up after Cindy has rendered a beautiful ballad or hymn uh, is a tough act to follow. We should do those before the reflection song, Deacon Chris, and that would be uh, probably easier. Um, but here's a, just a little bit of the story going forward. Um, I too was struck by the connection of today's gospel um, and what we're about to uh, enter into here today. Um, this gospel passage has been interpreted in a number of different ways. Deacon Chris, we heard a particularly challenging version of the interpretation from Father Joshua Peters this morning that I think is going to have us all thinking for the rest of the week. But uh, I've tended to um, crosswalk it with Luke 12 um, and the whole concept of to whom much is given, much is expected. And I was thinking of that because nearly 30 years ago at our parish, we did our first five-year strategic plan. And that very passage is on the front of that booklet. And at that point, at least, we, have five, we had five talents and turned them into 10. Now we may have two and turning them into four, or one and a half turning them into three. Uh, but we're doing just that. And that kind of set me on a path of really um, hyper-involvement in church and community activities, uh, really focused on um, helping the vulnerable, those at risk, creating equity conditions in schools and in resources and in basic goods and services for the residents of this city uh, and elsewhere. Uh, and it really helped me to have this burning desire to reignite a fire in our church um, as St. Francis did. But I'm not telling you that story to say that somehow that was the end of this path and now, because I really think that this is the beginning of the path. Those of you that work in church business know that sometimes you can feel pretty good about yourself when you're doing that stuff. I work in the church. I don't work in corporate America. I do this. I'm involved in all these commissions and that sort of stuff. And maybe we spend a little, not enough time really working on our inner selves, answering are we doing this not for ourselves or even for those that we're serving, but for God. And I think this last two and a half year process has really helped me to see that that's the next step in terms of defining the kind of work um, that I'll be involved with, following God's will and realizing that I should be doing it only for God. Someone whose opinion I respect a lot, who knew about today's event, um, said, well, Steve, you, you know, have always lived in the Franciscan spirit. And in some ways, again, that would be like really comfortable to say, yeah, that's kind of the case or not. But I don't really think that's the case. I think I'm quite away from living the Franciscan spirit and really just starting the journey to learn how to do that as effectively as possible. And not nearly as much as Joe and Joshua, as you'll hear uh, in a second, pale in comparison to that. Um, just want to acknowledge Joe and Joshua. This has been a, a brotherhood through a lot of different things, not the least of which is the pandemic uh, these last couple years. And, um, you know, guys don't talk a lot and share a lot of stories, but they just kind of have a bond when there's a bond. And I think we've had that bond. I know that I certainly feel it. Um, in terms of the fraternity, I, I really looking forward to um, the work that we've just started and being actively involved, particularly the work of the race committee. Uh, and I say that to say, not to tell you about what I'm going to be involved with, but to say that the Franciscan way that we've approached that topic and that work is frankly totally different than I've approached it through a whole bunch of conversations about how to be anti-racist over a whole number of years. And that way that I've approached it and the groups that we've been talking really haven't moved the dial, as is pretty evident from everything that's going on in our nation and the world. 
I've been humbled by, in a short period of time, how much we've been able to do with the Secular Franciscan Fraternity and some others, approaching it in a Franciscan way, in terms of the discussion, in terms of the dialogue. And Eileen, I'm thankful for you for, for leading that. So uh, looking forward to that as being an example of the way that uh, I'll conduct my life. Thank you, Steve. Yeah. We're really happy you want to profess. Thank you. Joshua, are you willing? They all knew we were asking them to do this, so they're very prepared. No. Sometimes spontaneity is just as good. Yep, that's what I'm going for. I'll just point this up a little bit. Thank you. So I was asked to talk a little bit about what profession means to me. And the way I kind of saw it was thinking of it as a consecration of sorts. When you have a rosary or Bible or a crucifix, it's uh, an object that reflects something great. And when you take it to a priest to become blessed, it becomes a sacramental. It is taken apart, set aside for a very specific purpose to honor God. And through profession, I am making the promise before all of you, the fraternity, and God to set my life apart and to become holy and single of purpose in the way that my vocation is, through my marriage, through my work. We're living in very tumultuous times, and I think we've all seen that um, hate between two people only begets hate. And so I'm excited to dedicate my life to following Christ in the footsteps of Francis and to bring love to the workplace, to the home, where it's so very much needed. Thank you, John. And we're really very happy that you've chosen to profess as well. Thank you. Joe, are you ready? Okay. Is that an okay? Uh, Brothers Bill challenged to us is where am I at today in my Franciscan journey? Number one, I'm nervous. Um, <laughs> And I don't mean speaking, I, this doesn't bother me too much. But when I was reading, and I went back into the journey book and read the first chapter, and it says that profession is a permanent public profession. And that didn't mean much to me two and a half years ago. I mean, it meant something, but it doesn't mean what it means today. It means that I'm going to stand in front of you in public and profess to live the same um, the Franciscan rule. That means that everyone here is a witness. My wife, my grandchildren, my, two of my children are here. That when I'm wrong and when I'm not doing what I profess to do, somebody needs to tell me and set me straight. Before I even came here, one of the, I studied about the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And it would surprise me that the gifts the Holy Spirit gives us are not our gifts. They're to be given to others. And I hopefully, my time here, my remaining time on this planet, that I utilize those gifts in the service of others. I promise to keep this book and live by everything that it says. It's not an easy document, but it from studying the last two and a half years, I found that this is the way that I want to live the rest of my life. And I hope that those who are here will help me do so. Sometimes the Holy Spirit guides us in surprising ways. Um, one thing my wife and I participate is we go to Holy Hour every Wednesday. And we, we do the Vespers and then we have about 45 minutes of quiet time. 
And I used to like to look at the Bible. And I went to the readings of James. I don't know why. I just opened it up. And it kind of really struck me. And I'm going to read the first part of it. What does the prophet, my brethren, if a man says he has faith but not, has not works, call faith, can his faith save him? If a brother and sister is poorly clothed and lacking daily food, and one of you says to them, go in peace, be warmed and filled, without giving them things needed for the body, what does it profit? So faith by itself, if it has no works, is dead. And that really kind of, you know, sometimes you just get knocked upside the head. And uh, this really did, and it was, the timing was really um, fortuitous. Also, conversely, I'm filled with great joy today. I have, starting today, I have dozens of new brothers and sisters who I hope will guide me to where they're at, and together we can get to where we all want to be. Um, hopefully, I will live my life as an example to my children, my grandchildren, and the people in my community. This is an opportunity to use my gifts from God to help others. I had a great friend who passed away, oh, 25 years ago. And most of you know that I'm a high school football coach, and he's the one who got me involved in coaching football. And he, he left me with this, and he always said it to the kids. Your talents are your gift from God. What you do with those talents are your gift to God. Thank you, John. And thanks, Joe, for choosing to profess today. Thank you. Laura, are you willing? I heard you got a little warning we were going to do this. So. I didn't call you first. Hope. I get really nervous talking in front of people, so I wrote it down. So I hope you don't mind. It's perfect. Okay. There was three questions in the email. The first one was, um, what does profession mean to me? I put, it means that I will work towards living a gospel way of life, following the example of St. Francis. It means my fraternity has become family. I am telling everyone that I want to be on a journey with Franciscans all over the world who want to keep God as the center theme of their lives. The second question was, how the fraternity or knowing St. Francis has changed my life. All through my formation, I was nurtured, taught, and supported by the fraternity. I started learning about how to live the secular Franciscan rule. It woke me up to a world I had only glimpsed before. My relationship with God has deepened and become very personal. God's love is like an unquenchable fire. Prayer and studying scripture has become a priority. Applying things I was learning started to become a process of conversion I hope never ends. Simplifying my life has been freeing. St. Francis' example has inspired me, and I know that this is all just the beginning. The last question was, why profession is important to me? It is a concrete opportunity to commit forever to live the gospel. I have found a group of like-minded people to travel with. I am promising to try and see Jesus in all people and respect all life forever. I am aligning myself with what the Catholic Church teaches. I am asking myself, how can I help rebuild the church? Thanks. Thank you very much, Laura. And Laura, thank you too for choosing to profess in our Franciscan way of life. I think it would be good if the four to profess would please stand. Joshua, Joe, Steve, and Laura, 
before the people of God, I ask you to express your will. Do you wish to embrace the gospel way of life by following the example and words of St. Francis of Assisi, which is at the heart of the rule of the secular Franciscan order? You have been called to give witness to the kingdom of God and to build a more fraternal world based on the gospel together with all people of goodwill. Do you wish to be faithful to this vocation and to practice the spirit of service proper to secular Franciscans? You have been made members of the people of God by your baptism and strengthened in confirmation by the new gift of the Spirit. In order to proclaim Christ by your love, lives and your words, do you wish to bind yourself more closely to the church and to work to rebuild the church and fulfill its mission among all peoples? The local fraternity is a visible sign of the church, a community of faith and love, together with all the members, you now pledge yourself to spend your efforts to make the fraternity a genuine ecclesial assembly and a living Franciscan community. From your seats, I ask all in the assembly to extend your hands over those to be professed. Lord, watch over your servants, Joshua, Joe, Steve, and Laura. May the spirit of your love penetrate their hearts so that your grace will strengthen them to keep their commitment to the gospel life. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. So you can sit down. So we Very ask those to profess you. to come one at a time to the microphone and to profess your vows. Well, Steve, it's a big moment. So oh, make your profession before me and all of the fraternity. I, Stephen Wasco, by the grace of God, renew my baptismal promises and consecrate myself to the service of his kingdom. Therefore, in my secular state, I promise to live all the days of my life the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ in the secular Franciscan order by observing its rule of life. May the grace of the Holy Spirit, the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary, and our Holy Father, St. Francis, and the fraternal bonds of community always be my help so that I may reach the goal of perfect Christian love. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Okay, Joe, come on up. Hi, Joseph Cannell. By the grace of God, renew my baptismal promise and consecrate myself to the service of his kingdom. Therefore, in my secular state, I promise to live all the days of my life the gospel of the Lord, our Lord Jesus Christ in the secular Franciscan order by observing the rule of its life. May the grace of the Holy Spirit, the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary, and our Holy Father, St. Francis, and the fraternal bonds of community always be my help so that I may reach the goal of perfect Christian love. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Congratulations. Joshua. I, Joshua Gibson, by the grace of God, renew my baptismal promises and consecrate myself to the service of his kingdom 
Therefore, in my secular state, I promise to live all the days of my life the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ in the secular Franciscan order by observing its rule of life. May the grace of the Holy Spirit, the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary, and our Holy Father, St. Francis, and the fraternal bond of community always be my help so that I may reach the goal of perfect, perfect Christian love. Thanks be, Thanks to, God. be to God. Congratulations. Okay, and now, I'll let Laura, you want to come up? And I'll switch places with Jeannie. I, Laura Scalzo, by the grace of God, renew my baptismal promises and consecrate myself to the service of his kingdom. Therefore, in my secular state, I promise to live all the days of my life the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ in the secular Franciscan order by observing its rule of life. May the grace of the Holy Spirit, the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary, and our Holy Father, St. Francis, and the fraternal bonds of community always be my help so that I may reach the goal of perfect Christian love. Thanks be to God. Be Joshua, Joe, Steve, and Laura. As the minister, I receive you into this fraternity of the secular Franciscan order. Your membership in the fraternity is a cause of great joy and hope for the members of this community. And in the name of the church, I confirm your commitment our seraphic father himself encourages you in the words of his testament. May whoever observes all this be filled in heaven with the blessings of the most high father and on earth with that of his beloved son, together with the Holy Spirit, the comforter, and all the powers of heaven and all the saints. And now we'll have the presentation of the Bibles. Go give her yours. Go give her her Bible. Christ, Christ the, the gift of the Father's the love, love, is the is way, the way to, God, to God, the, the truth, truth into which the Holy Spirit leads us, us and the life which God has come to give abundantly. abundantly. By your lifelong commitment to go from gospel to life and life to gospel, may you continually encounter the living and active person of Christ. And now we present the Tao. May you conform your thoughts and deeds to those of Christ and build a more fraternal and evangelical world by fulfilling our vocation as brothers and sisters of penance. And now we have the presentation of the lighted candle.
And I know the program doesn't call. F- oh, you have to pray first. We have one more. I'm sorry. <laughs> By your profession, you are the light of Christ in the world. Your light must shine before everyone that they may see goodness in your acts and give praise to our Heavenly Father. Amen. Congratulations. And though we've applauded once already, let's do it again because we're all so happy. Well, we have quite a few prayers in our hearts, prayers of praise and thanksgiving and petition. Let's stand now that we might offer some of them vocally to the Lord. Oh, you don't have them. There are a few here. Oh, you have them. For the church, may God's grace empower us all as faithful co-workers in spreading his truth and love throughout the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For judges and legislators, may God instill in them true justice toward and respect for the needs of the powerless. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are discouraged, who have lost hope, May God bring them consolation through his saving word. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For this faith community, may the Lord make us never weary in prayer. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, may God's infinite mercy bring them safely to the end of their journey in this kingdom, and we remember our brothers and sisters of the secular Franciscan order who have passed and are no longer with us. And we we remember those who are living and who are watching us live through our live streaming. We pray for all of you and for all of us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And now we open the floor for special intentions. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all those intentions that we hold in our heart, we give them now quietly to our God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God, who saves us, hear all of our prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you.
Please pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours will be acceptable to God our Almighty Father. Amen. Grant, O Lord, we pray, that what we offer in the sight of your majesty may obtain for us the grace of being devoted to you and gain us the prize of everlasting happiness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For you so loved the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as an exaltation we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray, 
that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the power of the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Alan, our Archbishop, and all who minister in our church. Remember also our sisters and brothers who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, Blessed Solanus, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. The Our Father is a prayer in which we pray that the kingdom of God might come. We pray for its fullness. We pray that the work of the kingdom be done so that it might come. Let's join in that prayer of the church as we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin, and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sin, but on the faith of us, your church, and graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be with you always.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be. Breathe on your church. 
Christians fold. One church, one bride, Jesus Lord of all. With one voice, we cry. Let us stand for a final prayer. Having received with divine reverence the divine mysteries, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, to inflame us with the fire of the Holy Spirit. These your servants, Joshua, Joe, Steve, and Laura, bound to you now by an act of sacred offering and to admit them forever to the company of your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Everyone can just sit down for a minute. I just have a small presentation on behalf of our fraternity to Steve, Joe, and Josh. It's a tradition within the St. Bonaventure fraternity that we um, give uh, papal blessings to each of our professed. So at this time, I would like to give to um, Steve. Oh, I'm sorry. Joe, sit down. It's Joe next. Joe's first. <laughs> Congratulations, Joe. Thank and that's a papal blessing from our Pope Francis. Thank you. Congratulations.
That's okay. Now, Steve, you're going to be in the middle this time. And we're very pleased. So I want to present with you the papal blessing from uh, Pope Francis. Receive it on behalf of all of the fraternity. Congratulations. And our loving father and his beautiful family, Josh. So I present to you the papal blessing of our Holy Father, Francis. Thank you. Yes, God bless and congratulations. And so I just want to take this opportunity to thank all of you who came today and to thank all of those who are with us live streaming. Thank you very much. And I especially want to thank Mary Ann Coomer, who's our formation minister, who um, has done just a lot. And, and I also want to thank the sponsors for what they did. The sponsors wanted to stand up, Doris and Joe and Ron. They put a lot of time in, and Mike. And I want to give a special shout out to Jeannie and her fraternity and the wonderful job they did with uh, bringing Laura to, to us today. So congratulations and thank you for being a part of this very fraternity. So my last parting words of wisdom to Steve, Joe, Josh, and Laura is now it's just begun. And the times which we are living, and I think Steve said it very well, that it's tumultuous. And so we have to help Jesus Christ heal our land. So we are the secular Franciscans of the third order. And we have the divine spirit with us and in us. And so I ask all of you to reflect in your heart, what is God calling you to do? How can we help heal our land? Which is beautiful music that we heard after communion. We're all called to do that, to bring peace and justice in our own way. And I don't know if uh, any of you remember Lester Bach. He was a Capuchin, and he did a lot with the Third Order in that. And he did wonderful talking about debate versus dialogue. And he encouraged dialogue. And I think that's an opportunity for all of us within our families within our fraternity, within our churches, within the public square, that we bring peace, that we be the peacemakers, and we dialogue in everything in charity. So I leave you with this, everybody, is to ask and pray the Holy Spirit for God's wisdom and love, because it's only going to be with his great gifts and his grace that we're going to be able to truly live our Franciscan spirit and to bring love and joy back to each one of us in our families and in our country. God bless and thank you all for being here. Let us all stand, bow our heads, and pray for God's blessing. Please respond, amen, to each invocation. May God, who inspires us in every good resolve, foster our hopes and strengthen our hearts that what we have promised we may keep with persevering faith. May God accept us with peace and joy that our peace and joy may overflow to others until the dawning of the day of eternity. Amen. May God's love, which has fashioned us into a family, brought together in the Lord's name, help us to show forth the image of Christ's love. Amen. May Almighty God bless us all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Usually we'd have a great big reception, which is no-no these days. Uh, hopefully we have a household we can go back to and celebrate with food and drink in some way, but our minister has one more announcement. We do. We have cookies. So Doris Allen brought cookies with a towel on it, so all of you please get a cookie before you leave because it wouldn't be Franciscan without a touch of hospitality. So. Thank you. Our Eucharist has ended...
Let us take the gospel which we have received here into the world with us. Thanks be to God. This is one of the only places I know of that still has electricity. <laughs> but the center doesn't. And uh, so I'll give you about 20 minutes and then we're going to lock up because, uh, and it's not just here. Both of our maintenance men live far away from here and both of them are out of electricity too. So who knows what you're going, going home to. It's pretty spotty at this point because of the high winds. Yes, you can sing. Thank you. 